remember when I was in high school, my dad got by the way, this is being recorded, so this is just for uh, forever oh. what the story you're about to tell. Am I going to get arrested? Am I get arrested? Yeah, yeah. that's what I say. <laughs> oh, is that the laptop there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, you know, so, yeah I figured you know, like, not everybody could make it here at the same You know, we got computers and other classes and that kind of thing. So, I'm, I'm trying to do this more often. It worked out pretty well. The uh, university has uh, uh, a subscription to something called Ensemble. Yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah. We've heard about it. It's like in-house YouTube. So I used to put everything up on YouTube, but now I'm like, yeah, this is, this just goes like directly to it. It takes, it takes a couple, like, you know, 10 minutes to load up like a two hour thing, but it's not too bad. All right. So, um, we're covering chapters 13, 14, and 11 on this exam. Uh, there's also, uh, I think, um, also, often um, I will uh, ask some type of uh, ME uh, 370, or you need to have ME 370 knowledge to uh, be able to do part of a problem uh, at, at times. Uh, just a you know fair warning that there you, you do know, need to remember uh, things like stress and that, that kind of thing. Um, so uh, the, the, this right here, I've, I've included up on the blackboard as uh, suggested problems uh, that you could also try. Now, I've given you a bunch of practice problems, so this is probably over the top. But if you were, you know, one of those very, very ambitious uh, people uh, that wanted to have extra, extra problems, here are some that uh, we picked out or uh, Dr. Ghosh picked out. Uh, I also kind of helped him uh, back when, uh, b before I was teaching 470, Dr. Ghosh was, and, and he, he wouldn't give like homework, he would just give quizzes, and then he would post these, say, hey, here's problems you should try out for yourself. And then, uh, so I went ahead and just kept doing that as well. So just, uh, um, so sometimes I think, you know, I don't want to steal away your opportunity uh, to, to work on the practice problems and simulate the exam. Uh, and do that during a review session. So um, I just, th these are optional things that we have that we could look through. We could work through these, some of these problems instead of doing the ones that are in the, uh, 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 that are posted. I have posted uh, the, the problems, right? Yeah. Onto yeah. Uh, Blackboard. Have I put the solutions in there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right. Um, so, uh, you yeah, know, that was something I do in Dynamics and in uh, 370, but. 470. I kind of like okay, you're adults. You can, you can. I, I don't know. You're still an adult, I guess, in, even in dynamics. But I wanted to try to push you to try to practice the problems rather than to read the problems. Just because the results that I get when I don't do when when I don't do that, like in dynamics, I have lots of people failing because they just read the solutions. But I think you've got the point at this point. Right? Um. So I also did put up, uh, post up on Blackboard uh, uh, the results of these. By the way, I'm not, I, I don't think, oh, okay, this is probably not asking anything that has warm gears in them, but uh, um, the, the, and so I think we did some of these problems actually in class. So there's examples that are there. Uh, so this is your time. Uh, so you tell me what you would like to work through, what kind of problems uh, you would like to see done. The hardest The hardest one? I have included uh, some uh, a 370 content here with uh, uh, these combined stress problems. These are really, I kind of cheated and used the uh, uh, final exam practice problems uh, as part of this. I'm not, I, I, you know, I, I don't know, because of the amount of content in the, that we've already covered here in this, in this, for this exam, I, I don't know that I would be necessarily asking a specific ME370 problem like I have in the past. Like sometimes I made this, obviously I extended this exam to include bearings where we didn't last semester, right? So now we have bearing questions, so you can't make, you can't ask too many questions, so. Um, so we get right into it. We had, uh, in terms of uh, for fall of fifteen, here's a problem of gear basics and gear train. Uh, we got gear train, gear forces. Um, some of these problems, I should uh, say, were part of a, a take-home exam, right? Uh, like one of the 
three exams I gave at Coast Guard. But, you know, they, we, we, I had three exams and a final exam, and one of them was a take-home exam. Because there were longer problems that I wanted them to do. But uh, we don't do that here. So I, um, and uh, so what, just, just a warning, some of these are way too long to be able to do as the, during, during a regular exam. So if you were trying to time yourself on the ones where I've mentioned, take home exam, doesn't it? So what would you like to work on? Anything in here? Can you do a planetary year problem? Yes. Let's see. I don't think I have any old um, exam problems that have planetary gears, but that is something that I would uh, potentially ask. So let's uh, take a look at one of the uh, Shigley uh, problems. Um, all right, so they, they don't really have many. This is a planetary, and that is a planetary. Have we done uh, Have we done this one before? Do you recommend this? Yeah, this one. Yeah. How about this one? No, no. All right. So, ah, oh, and then it's a terrible spot on the board, too. <clears throat> and because I'm trying, this is going to be interesting, right? So here's the solution. For this. We'll pull the solution up again. Let's see in terms of, sure. I can get a little bit more space up there. All right. um, the hard part in this problem, the hard thing, or the, the aspect that makes it challenging is that they put um, the, they have these dash lines as part of it and trying to uh, uh, figure out which uh, gear spins freely and which one's attached to a shaft requires you to look very closely at uh, these dash lines. So that gear is attached to the shaft but this gear right here is not attached to that shaft. This shaft passes through that gear. So that's kind of confusing. Um, it's also difficult to uh, really tell what's going on because this is an above view uh, to the thing. So I suggest, and I don't have the solution in front of me, by the way, so this is really flying dangerous, dangerously close to the sun. Actually, I might have, um, uh, let, me, let me check that first. Let me, let me see, I just wanna see if I can, um, have my uh, training notes here. Did I have the foresight to? Nope. I did not have enough foresight to copy the solution. Oh, wait a minute. I did for some of them, I didn't do it for all of them. Oh, well. Okay. In the reverted planetary train illustrated, find the speed and direction of rotation of the arm if gear two is unable to rotate. All right, so gear two is unable to rotate and gear six is driven at 12 rpm in the clockwise direction as viewed from the bottom of the figure right so somehow gear six is being driven here and we want to find which way uh this arm is going to go and this is messed up problem uh i wish i had this out in front of me and spent some time looking at it Find the speed and direction of rotation of the arm if gear two is unable to rotate. Gee, so I guess as part of that, you must this this too must be uh, passing through right here, right? That's got to be the case. These problems always bother me because uh, they're saying that gear two is fixed, so. Right in here, so this thing's big, and then somehow gear six is being driven at 12 RPM in the clockwise direction. So that's going to be in that direction right here. So if we're looking at this, I'll try to exaggerate uh, what's going on. Um, my dust is, I'll try to do my dust is. Here is gear two. Gear six is bigger. Um, we have. 
This is gear four, and oh, I didn't drop any. Give me gear lock four on there. Right. And you notice that this is an intermediate shaft that's made that's driving gear five. Right. And so uh, there is an arm that's connecting these two right here. Right here and right here is the same arm. So this shaft must be uh, stationary right here because it's connected to gear two. So somehow there's some means that it's kind of It'd be, it's really hard to explain. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's another gear over here that's driving six that they're just not telling us about, right? Somehow they're able to make six turn. So like that, that would be the one that I'm, I'm talking about here. But th they've said that this is going to be in the clockwise direction, uh, so we could say that it's N6. So uh, what we're going to say right here is that uh, uh, this is going to be uh, the, f well, it really depends on which one you're going to consider. Uh, to the thing. Let's, let's say that the gear train, let's say that uh, 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 looking at this right here, that six drives five, right? So the E as part of this is going to be uh, um, number of teeth of six driving gear number five. And, uh, and gear four is going to drive gear two. Of course, gear two is not moving, but in terms of the gear train, that's going to be true. So we have uh, gear uh, uh, four. And by the way, there's a good chance that I'm going to fall on my face um, as part of this, just to give you like total fair warning. Um, when trying to uh, pick these things out it, live, there's this hazard right here. Sometimes I, I will... Uh, I spend a lot more time working on a problem than I have like right here. So I'm, I'm trying to cover my tracks if I look like a moron. Um, so one thing they didn't give us is the number of teeth of gear six. Can we figure that out? Sure, I think so. Well, um, 16 plus whatever uh, this is better equal with 30 plus 20, right? Because we know that the diameter is yeah. the center to center distance right here. It better be the same as the center to center distance here. Therefore, the uh, uh, you know the, the half the number of teeth here and half the number of teeth are going to be half the diameter and half the diameter. And the same thing here: half the diameter, half the diameter, half the number of teeth within the whole number of teeth. So it better be that twenty plus thirty better equal number here plus 16. Uh, so somebody do that for me because I can't do math. 34. Is that 34? Yeah, 34. Ooh, yay. And 6 is equal to 34 T. So we have 34 that's going to drive 16. And then we're going to have 30 that drives 20. Math. Yeah. And then math happens. So 34 times 30 equals divided by 16 equals divided by 20. So 3.1875 is our gear ratio. And our other equation for our gear ratio is in chapter 13, and we look that up, we find the planetary gears, 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 oh come on, where'd you get it? The gear train there, gear train there. All right, it goes E is equal to NL, the last one, minus the arm divided by the first one minus the arm, right? So, 
Yeah, I wrote that right. So uh, that one is going to equal 3.187. Oh, we have, we have to be careful in here. We have to uh, make sure that we have uh, established whether that's a positive or a negative number. Right. So uh, that requires a little bit of thought. And, and really, I drew, I drew this thing kind of to, uh, uh, as part of it, to think the thing through, but also to do our little trick right here. Here we go. All right, so this gear six is driving that one right there, right? That's uh, gear five. All right, so gear four is going the same direction as five, and that's coming this way. So that will make gear two go that way, if gear two could spin. So the input would be clockwise, the output would be clockwise, therefore that's gotta be a positive number. This is usually the case when they're all external teeth gears. When you have an internal teeth like a, and a ring, that's where you can have, you can get, fall short. Um, so, okay, so what they've told us is the first one from the way that we've uh, approached this thing is gonna be 12 RPM, so we got 12, minus the arm, divided by, no wait, I, I always get that confused. Is the N, is the L the first or uh, last? Right? Uh, last. The last one in this gear train is zero, in the way that I've worked the thing out, right? Because, because it, it, you know, we don't know what's fixed yet as when we were doing when we're giving these things numbers and we're thinking about the thing. And then, because in this arrangement right here, we might have a clutch that decides that thing is gonna be fixed, right? So then we have this arrangement, and when we come to this and put them all together, that, that's the point where we decide what's going to be a, a, a fixed as part of this. So the first one is 12, right? And NA, and so when you do 3.1875. So we have to do a little bit of math here and say negative NA, and I have to do this, and I can't like, go in my head. I, 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 have, I have to do things this way. It's just, it's ugly, long, and intensive here, but the negative NA, I'll bring this over, right? Go 3.1875 NA, is that true? Is equal to 3.18, 7, 5 times 12, and so that means that Na is going to be equal to 3.1875 times 12 divided by, uh, um, I guess that's going to be 2.1875, is that true? Do you agree? My algebra is soft. All right. Um, so hopefully, is that going to be the same thing as what we said? 17.49? Yes, right now. Yay! <laughs> Fly, it was at uh, uh, Without a Net, right? Live Without a Net. That's a Van Halen album. Well, it's actually a video, their first live video. Uh, and it was filmed in New Haven, Connecticut. That's the kind of additional information you get with my <laughs> Something you really wanted to know? New Halen, Connecticut. I think it was 1986. I was 16. I was really interested. We okay? What next? What do you got? Requests. Bearing. Bearings. Oh, uh, there, yeah. There's a couple. Of, uh, there's a couple of practice problems that are kind of obnoxious. Bearings. Uh, I think I picked them out of the book. Back in the day, when I was still listening, and I've confused my—I remember confusing myself on the very problem. There's another cautionary tale. Um, let's see here. Steel All right, so here's a confusing one. Oh. Uh, do I want to do this to myself? Yeah, I'll go with mine. 
Yeah, this is the one that gets confusing. All right. Um, so uh, it's really similar to the one that I was uh, uh, I was going to talk about. But two ball bearings from different manufacturers are being considered for a certain application. Bearing A has a catalog rating of two kilonewtons based on catalog rating system of 3,000 hours and 500 RPM, 90% reliability. Um, and they gave you the WIPO parameters, which are the same as what we usually call manufacturer two. Um, bearing B has a catalog rating of seven kilonewtons uh, based on a catalog that rates at 1 million cycles, 95% reliability uh, for a given application to determine which bearing can carry the larger load. And this is an apples to apples question. It's uh, kind of a little, a little frustrating, a little annoying, but um, because you could go two different ways in solving. And um, so one way is to turn manufacturer A in convert manufacturer A into manufacturer B's terms. The other is to go manufacturer B, turn them into manufacturer A's terms, and you can decide which is going to be able to handle the most. So, um, and to, to start with, I think I decided um, to turn A into B. So, uh, A is based on 90%, so I want to turn it into 95%. And it's hours, we can find out what they were basing their LA on by taking Laverne and uh, this uh, uh, RPM 60, so 3,500 times 60 is equal to 9E7 cycles. And um, yeah. Okay. So what we define then is an XD, right? If we're going to base this on um, on B's numbers, we say nine E seven one E six uh, uh, there. So well, I, I should have written before that that it was L A to L B or nine E seven to one E six. So that's 90, obviously, 90 million. Um, so here's, here is the, uh, uh, the thing that can be confusing. It's like, okay, how do I turn a, this rating that's at 90% into uh, one that's going to be uh, 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 95? So I'm essentially I'm derating the thing. Or... Let me say that again. Uh, it's got to be, yeah. See, I told you I could feel like I myself. Um, I said there's two ball bearings from different manufacturers are being considered for a certain application. Bearing A has a catalog rating of two kilos in there. Um, and bearing B, right? So, A is being adjusted to B's basis. Um, so, uh, uh, I'm, trying, I'm having an argument with myself right here. I said that I need to have, uh, I'm not going to call it, I'm going to call it now a C5 for A. Right, so before it was a C uh, uh, ten of A. Right now, that was the, the, that was the one that was equal to um, uh, uh, two kilonewtons. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, okay, so so here is the here is the basic idea. Um, I, I probably would have um, often going for my catalog rating right there, uh, I would have 
uh, take in my AF, and you can't see this if I go over there on the side. I'm writing out what the um, usual go-to equation is. And, and so this is the, is it FD right here? And then I go XD, and then this is the gobbledygook underneath the bottom of it, and that's the raise to the one over A. Remember that most often we are dividing by a number, right? That is good. That, that's usually that's going to be less than one. This thing underneath the denominator is is you know something less than one. So what we're end up gonna get, where we're going to end up doing is uh, uh, making this into a larger number, right? Which is going to make this into a larger number. But this, we need, for, because we're, de, we're derating this thing when it comes to reliability. It's 90, and now we want to turn it to 95, right? Well, what we, what we want to do instead is that this thing needs to be a smaller number because of reliability. So when we go to this thing, it's, as much as uh, uh, it's going to be uh, um, different from what we were doing before, we want to take and say that this is going to be x, multiply the thing, x0 plus theta minus xo, 1 minus rd uh, raised to the 1 over d. Does that make sense? So we're not doing this right here, we're, we're doing this. Um, and now even though that this XD is going to tend to make this thing larger because it's 90, uh, because this, so this thing was like based on uh, 90 million cycles, and so well, they, it definitely can do more because if it's only gonna be based on a million cycles, but then also it has a difference in the reliability. So uh, we take that application factor, we take that force uh, that's on the load on the thing, we have 90, and then um, we have 0 0.02 plus our 4.459 minus 0 0.02, and one minus our 0 0.95, and once again, I, I went, uh, against what I said we were going to do, which was to use um, the, uh, the the logarithm uh, one instead. That's what I have written down, so I'm, I'm going with it. Um, so this ends up equaling 7.596 kilonewtons, right? So I've converted uh, A into this one, which I've designated with the five in there just to say, well, it's 95% reliability, so 5% are gonna fail. That's why I'm using that uh, thing. But, okay, so now we've converted it into this, and we can see that it can handle more. So that's the answer right there. So determine which one, that, so bearing A can handle more. We totally could have redone this whole thing and maybe I'll do it up above it in blue in a totally different way. We could have said um, that x, the xd now becomes lb over la. So it's going to be 1e6 over 9e7. Uh, uh, um, I didn't bother canceling it out. I said it was 1 over 90 instead of uh, and then, uh, so C10B is going to be C5B, uh, uh, right? And I'm converting here and say it's XD over all of that gobbledygook. Um, and uh, uh, that, wait a minute, okay, so do I need that? Yeah, I do. Yeah, so now I am converting this from 95% uh, to 90%, right? So that's actually the, the way that I usually uh, work the thing. And all of this, by the way, if I was to, to just, just this portion of the thing was 0 0.6088. So I, all I needed to do here was to go 0 0.6088. Right, and that's the one over A. Right there. So if you go right here, now we go seven. 
uh, times my 1 over 90 over my 0 0.6088 raised to the 1 third, we end up finding that it's 1.843 kilonewtons. So now we've converted B into terms of A, and it's less. So obviously A is the stronger bearing. So either way, you get to the same destination and the same conclusion, but it's uh, just two different ways uh, to approach it. I think the confusing part, and you can you watch me live here get confused, um, you have to, they do I multiply or divide by this? Well, the answer really comes to the logic. Um, is the final result going to be what greater or smaller because of the increase or decrease of the reliability? Right? And in this case, we are increasing the reliability. Like most, most of the cases, we're, we're decreasing the reliability, right? So that we could, we, could use, we could match a catalog that only has 90% reliability. So we, so we desire a certain amount of reliability, but we're going to pick a bearing that's less reliable. So we're going to amp, it ends up amping up the amount that they say it can handle. We need it to handle uh, more, have more reliability so it can handle less. It ends up having to handle less uh, uh, in, in that uh, sense. Okay. So quick question. Why do you end up using XB? I know normally we just use the life of one of the bearings in the C10 equation instead of XD. Um, I prefer this equation right here. But you can you know, all you really need to do right in here is uh, instead to just say um, L of what you're having to end up having to do to the rated manufacturer, which is often going to be a million okay. right here. Is that how you treat it? Because I know the Dr. Olaf well, does well, it slightly we, different sometimes. Olaf doesn't just LD. We don't do like a ratio. We use just the, the yeah. life of the bearing. It's got to be somewhere in there. There has to be a, a life in, in there. I mean, there has to be like the million or something somewhere located. It could, it could end up being in the, it has to be the denominator somewhere. Yeah, oh, yeah. There, there's a. Uh, I'd have to take a look and see what you're uh, referring to. Oh, uh, you're right. It's the, the 10 to the 6 is the denominator. Yeah, yeah. Just remember that the fundamental thing that we are saying is that F. A times L is, is equal to a constant. That's what all of this is. We're, we're, we're treating that idea there. And like we're, we're, we end up, it's really because of an empirical thing. Um, it has a line that's going through there, right? So that we can see, all right, uh, so, so we said, no, know that it's a constant. So that any particular thing, uh, um, so if we have one F A right here, we get, an, we get an L1, we have an F2, and we have an L2. So it's written, uh, well, and these are both, they have to have A's on the top of them uh, 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 to be able to do that. So uh, that we end up saying that we can have like F2 is equal to F1 times our L1, no, L1 over L2 raised to the 1 over A. I think I did that right. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, in one of the equations, they just use this life ratio of XD. Does the 1 over B just apply to the 1 minus RD, or does it apply to the whole denominator? One over B. Oh, 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 oh. This should apply. Yeah. The whole thing up. No, no, no. Oh, just, just, just on that. Okay. You said one. Okay. I left off a uh, parentheses because I started one here. And so, yeah, because that does get multiplied by the whole thing. But that one over B only applies to this portion. And you'll recall that um, I do, I want to try to fix all of my notes and change. Only because I, I think it's going to be, it, 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 there are some scenarios where you might want to uh, 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 go the other direction. Um, 
So I had to multiply, I had to multiply uh, here that by this. I could have, however, um, no, 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 I'll take that back. That, that was fine to do. If I wanted somehow to go down below 90%, uh, percent, we would want to use the um, alternative equation uh, uh, for this. Um, so instead of, uh, um, it's a, instead of this equation right here, we alternatively could use one that looks like this right here. And it goes uh, natural log of 1 over Rd. And that gets raised to the 1 over B. <coughs> And, and, and so, so that's uh, equation 11.9 that you could use uh, uh, that replaces this guy right here, which is uh, equation 11.10. Because this one right here is an approximation and this one uh, of this one. But I don't really care if you use either one of them. But I'm just the, the the limitation of this form right here is that it only it's only applies to when you want to do something from ninety percent and above for for reliability. But if you wanted only eighty percent reliability, this equation wouldn't be able to be useful. You would need to use this. So, all right, another question. Another another problem. One time. Um, gear stress. Did you do gear stress. That makes sense. Gear forces or gear kinematics is another thing we can, uh, we, can we can do a problem with that. Let's do the gear stress to start with. Um, we have two choices. We can either do well. Actually, we have kind of three choices, four choices. We can either use the non-agma or the agma, and we can either do wear or bending. So gear stresses. Uh, I guess you wear. Uh, I have a gear problem. So there is a Agma one right here. This is from a quiz. So I said I want to Preloaded bolts. Example. Some of these I did only gave a, gave a table. Huh? Find the bending stress. Okay. So, um, is this the right one? Yeah, okay. We have, uh, first thing we often do in any of these problems dealing with the, the gear stress is we often we, we want to know the diameter uh, of the pinion. We might need the diameter of the gear, but it's almost always the diameter of the pinion is like the first thing that we're going to find. And so this has uh, 16 teeth, right? No, no, it's 32 teeth. 32 teeth uh, driving 80. So uh, 32 divided by a pitch of 16, and it ends up being 2. We can do that now. Then we find the, uh, the speed. Pi. D, oh, P, N, P. And we could have done this for the gear as well. We would have found, as long as we use the diameter and the uh, RPM uh, for the gear, we, wish we should it better end up to the same uh, answer. So um, that's uh, pi uh, to 3600. And 
ends up with 1,885 uh, feet per minute. Then we uh, find the force from 33,000, and I'll use H for uh, our power, so 33,000. The power is three horsepower, and we divide by that 1885, and we end up with 52.52, that's not a lot. Um, well, I didn't leave myself a lot of room. Okay. So um, we want to populate a, uh, the equation, the Lewis equation, which is going to be the stress is equal to KV WT times the pitch divided by the face width and y. So uh, one thing that we need to know is um, what kind of uh, uh, what kind of KV that we want do we want to use? And so it should have been uh, uh, clear in, in the question. It should have been in, in the way that got asked. It should have been asked uh, so that you could find, um, you could look up and say which KV equation uh, should we use. So that's probably something that I should have uh, included in there. I say that cut or milled profile is, I see from my solution, that's the equation that I used for my KV. So I took my KV and I used uh, 1200 plus V over uh, 1200. So is there a way that I could have told that from here? You said in my, it said, you said it says the gear teeth profiles are milled. Oh, there you go. Thank you. So I didn't screw up, I just didn't read well. I didn't screw up this time, last time. Yeah, I, thought it said. I didn't screw up last time, I screwed up this time. So we have a, this is a pretty significant um, uh, dynamic factor, huh? All right. That's exciting, it's going pretty fast. Um, and then uh, last thing we need is this uh, uh, why. What's that why? What is the Lewis. purpose of the why? The Lewis. Yeah, but well, what, is, what, what is it purpose? What does it do? Is it for the number of teeth? Uh, well, it is based on the number of teeth, but it isn't correct for the number of teeth per se. It's called a Lewis form factor. Right, so does that like give you kind of it's like the shape of the teeth? It ain't a cantilever beam, right? But it also does include some of the things that are kind of like uh, uh, that that we're we're basing it on, like the that the moment of inertia and that kind of thing uh, the, the, that 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 is left off of it. Because this is really MC over I, except that it's not exactly a uh, a cantilever. Um. Is it accounting for the fact that in a tooth, like the stress isn't the max point of stress is happening like inside? Do you know? Do you yeah, I know. I, well, I, I, the second part of what you're about to say, I, it, I didn't think was. I think you were going somewhere, but <laughs> <laughs> it's the fact that this right here does not equal. Let's see. I should make the equal sign and the not right there. This right here. Right, and I should have made them look like they were similar in shape to each other, but uh, not, make, not not because it's bigger, but because it's, it has a shape to the thing right there. It's a ta it's a tapered thing, and yeah. like the, the bigger the more teeth that you have, the uh, 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 I don't know if I can say that right there. Um, you know, for a given pitch and a given angle. Uh, you'll start to uh, have a pressure angle as you get the, the larger teeth that you have. They, they, I think you could say that they get squattier looking, right? They have this. They have a different radius of curvature for sure, right? With the, with the larger number of teeth, even though they have the same pressure angle and the same pitch, 
Uh, uh, so they, you have to have a different Lewis form factor. Now, uh, so this is for the uh, uh, um, 32 teeth that we're looking for because we're doing the pinion, and we end up having uh, looking up. They don't have 32. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the numbers are that we have here. Yeah, 30 and 34, so we actually have to do, uh, well, no, we don't have to do an interpolation because that take the average of the two. Um, so we end up having uh, 0 0.359 plus the uh, um, 0 0.371 um, divided by 2, and we get 0 0.365. So up here, populating all that stuff, 2.571. Um, with our 52.52, right, and then the pitch 16, the face width is three quarters of an inch, and the Y is 0 0.365, and we get um, 7,892, this is PSI, so we might as well answer it as KSI, 7.89 KSI. So for like a form factor that we'd have to find, uh, would you rather uh, interpolate if needed to, or would you rather just take the average? Oh, well, in this case, we can, it is interpolating. Taking the average is interpolating because it was between 30 and 34. But, like, if we had to... If you had to, that means I was being a mean bastard. Okay. Yeah. Why, why would that... Uh, you know, just an extra... Like, yeah. Eyeball interpolate on the exam, or do you want us to... I think that I'll it? try not to make you interpolate. Okay. If I were to, you could just slap me around. All right, all right. <laughs> Proverbially, I don't know if you know what that. No, 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 metaphorically. <laughs> Proverbally. Metaphysically. Right there, metaphysically. Yeah. And the privacy of, you know, I'm at your shop where I can hear this. I can feel the vibes. The human vibes. Do you think I should make a rap video? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. I'm, terrible. I'm terrible at making that video. I have a, uh, you need to, yeah. Later. Later, gotcha. I'll be there. No, you won't. Did you just ask for a piece of coin? <laughs> Is it enough to share the whole room? <laughs> Can you just send an accept? All right, we ready? This is a uh, post-it, by the way. So I don't know if any, you don't have it? Did he post it? Did Dr. Orla post it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah, no, no, I'll, I'll stop about you were racing. Okay, okay. 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 That's it. Two more to um, wait, okay, so one, two, gear forces, gear... Yes. Uh, gear forces. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Gear forces. Can we do like a combination where we solve for gear forces and then we use the forces for something? No. Uh, if there's one here. Yeah, okay, like homework for a more than a lot of them. There's a whole lot of words there. A lot of words, words, words. This is part of the take on the exam. Uh, This one where we had it right here? This is really long. Uh, this is mostly bearing stuff. Yeah, this is this is the one where we had to, that, that had to uh, and this is actually out of a um, is that true? I think it's out of a PE um, professional engineer uh, practice exam. Right here, we have this uh, terribly, terrible gear arrangement right here. Right. Why, would you, why would you make the shaft that long and put these little gears right in the center? Right? There's absolutely no reason to do that. I mean, there must have been. Some. It's just for the sake of it. This actually does have some axial load as part of it. So that's, this is really irritating, this problem. But it was a take-home problem. Do you want to do this or do you want to do a gear force instead? Most um, in terms of uh, um, 
have that gear force problem. Is this one? These are just center, this center distances. I mean, here's a force. Well, I don't know if this problem's that hard. Or Uh, let me see. If I can't read with my. Is this the 13? No. What homework is the figure for you? What is that one? This homework, homework one? Homework six, homework six problem one. Do I do that? Homework six. Do you know how? Sure. Wait a minute. Homework 6? Homework 6? Homework 6 is the one that... <laughs> uh, I mean... Homework 4? Homework 4? Is that what you want to do? Or no, he actually wanted to do homework 6. He wanted you oh, to do homework 6. Or it's trick me. Right. Oh, that's true. It's good yeah. It's tricky. Um... Yeah. See, do I have this problem done? I don't have this problem done. All right, well, we'll work it out. Um, so here's a, it is also from the, the gear thing that I used in my lab at, uh, at Coast Guard. And not Coast well, Guard, at, at UConn. And it had 16 teeth driving, uh, no, excuse me, 32 teeth driving 80 teeth and 48 teeth driving uh, 64. So uh, what would be good is to find uh, all the forces that are going to be applied uh, to all those and then do free body diagrams to figure out what, uh, uh, what the forces that get placed on each of the shafts. Um, so the solution that I'm actually posting doesn't really have work this one out. So it might be one that's worth uh, uh, doing here. So uh, let me write down all the stuff that we uh, need um, because we're recording this right here um, and I want to have more usable space. So um, the pitch onto the thing is 16 uh, teeth per inch. And N2 is 32 and three, right? Cause, so we're numbering it uh, two, three, four, and five. So here you can't, I, I don't want to write on the on board on the wall for this. So 32 driving 80, and then uh, what did I say, 48 driving 64. And the input um, speed is going to be 1500 RPM. So that's really going to be gear two is driving there. And uh, I gave you the pressure angle is 14.5 uh, uh, degrees. And anything else that I need? Um, did I give you the power? Yeah, the power is going to be 2.5 horsepower. And the things that I want to find, I want to find all the forces. So A, uh, well we went, oh, so A, we want to find the rotational speed uh, and output speed. So we want to find, uh, I decided to go theta dot as part of that when I was writing the thing up. So theta two dot, is that's what I mean by that is uh, N2. So I want to find what, um, well, this is actually this is kind of weird. Why do they call this right here? Why do they call it that? I don't know. Let's just write that it's going to be. Uh, okay, I guess. Oh, because I, I was calling this theta. Oh, I see. Okay. I was labeling it the way that I labeled it in my PhD. That's the reason why I was using this thing. I was calling that theta, uh, uh, theta dot two, theta dot three, theta dot four. So this ended up being theta dot one. A little weird. Um, I'd, I'll just say here that it's going to be n uh, uh, three and n four. That's going to be the intermediate shaft, and I also want to find n five. Um, and we also want the direction of this. And then we want to do uh, in B. We want to go all the forces and uh, free body diagrams and label them the way that Shigley does. And 
right? So calculate all the force. So we, oh, I want them to draw the free body diagrams and label all of them, and then calculate with all the force. I got you. Okay. And then calculate the total horizontal and vertical forces acting on uh, the intermediate shaft. Right. So, uh, um, so this this was really FBDs. Calculate the forces, and then D um, um, forces for the FBDs. And then I also want to get the um, uh, uh, total force. And it'd almost be better to do it, uh, actually do the 3D shaft of the thing instead, uh, because what I'm actually asking for are forces on a hypothetical force uh, of, like, uh, I'll try to explain. Um, we have a gear and a gear right here um, onto this right here. We have this gear here and then that gear there. And I'm asking for like a resultant force that's happening on there, but they're actually separate ones and they're different and they're on two different bearings would be a, a, a more appropriate thing. But this, I was asking it this way right here. Uh, actually, this is, the, this is the first time I taught the class uh, in the fall of 13. And I was asking it here because that's the way one of the homework problems was done, right? That we were uh, trying to make a similar one done. So I got all that information out of the way. And let me make a blank slide and put it up here so that we can uh, do the work on the thing. So um, do I need all the diameters? I think I might need at least the pinion diameter. Um, yeah, as part of this. Uh, so, you find, uh, you might as well find all of them and see if we need them. So that's uh, 32 divided by 16, 80 divided by 16, 48 divided by 16, and 64 divided by 16. <laughs> So uh, that ends up being uh, two inches, five inches, uh, three and a half, and three inches. That was nice of them doing that. Um, did I ask for the center to center distances? I don't think so. No, I want the rotational speed. All right. So I, I just looked at that thing. So I, you know, I do this so often for things that maybe that, that was something that I need. Uh, but if I was going to approach it uh, maybe logically, I'd probably answer what problem A was first. And um, I just get to, I could either use the, the, the train value method or I could just look at my uh, uh, gear ratios. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think so. I think I was looking at it too close quickly. And I think this is supposed to be three. <coughs> what happened is I was looking at the, I'm looking at a table and not looking at the actual problems there. So I, I, read, I read, there was a, there was a center to center distance that I was looking at instead of that three. Thing. Um, so uh, in finding the, uh, the, the in between um, guy right here, we could say that, um, maybe I'll write this one first here, So we'd say that we'd have um, the gear three here is going to be um, reduced by this gear ratio right here. So it's going to be N2. Right in there. Am, I, am I correct in that? Is that should be, yeah, it should be a slower speed. Three should be a slower speed. Um, so we end up having 32 divided by 80 times our, uh, what did I say, 1500 RPM. So we should have uh, 600 um, ends up being an RPM. And then uh, we, we know that that's also equal to N uh, gear four. And then we can say the gear five right here is going to be reduced by N uh, four to N five uh, times N four. 
or it's going to be uh, 60, uh, 48, 64, and that's going to times our 600, and we end up with 450 RPM. Alternatively, we could have found what our E was going to be, and that's going to go N2 drives N3, and N4 drives N5, right? Which ends up being uh, 32, 80, 48, 64. And did I do the E? Um, for this thing, I think I end up coming with a, a gear train ratio of 0.3, which uh, if we applied to uh, right here, so you said that N5 was equal to E times N2, 0.3 times our 1500, and we would have got 450 RPM. In uh, part B here, we'll set these things up. I think on the, maybe on the page, I think I had it here. Oh, let's see. Then the free body diagrams require that nothing, uh, uh, that you, you separate them out. And I'm just drawing these over these just keep you, so you can see what the orientation um, is going to be relative to each other. So um, I, I think I said in this case, uh, and looking at here, that uh, the gear two is going um, clockwise. Did I show that as part of the uh, problem? Uh, it looks like on the motor. There's a yep. arrow. Yeah, so you can see uh, back in here, it's going, it's going clockwise if you're looking from that. So uh, that means that the motor, uh, the, the shaft right here that's on here, let me, let me actually draw like a, a circle here to represent the shaft, which is applying uh, the thing that's transmitting a torque onto here. But this has a torque right here, all the way down to, I'll put it in there, a torque input onto the thing. And if I were to label it the way that most things are labeled, this would actually would be shaft A, this would be shaft B, again shaft B, and this would be shaft C. That's the way that the, the book does most of them. So we say that this is an external torque from the shaft A being placed on gear two. So we might call it uh, uh, TA2 is being applied right there. And um, that means that the force uh, that's being applied uh, tangentially right here has to be opposing it. So this is going to be a force um, uh, of three onto two in the tangential direction. And of course, you can't pull a gear, you can only push a gear. So it'd be force. Uh, um, it, uh, three, two in the radial direction has to go towards the center there, right? Similarly, up here, we could write all of these, but in the opposite direction. And this is going to be force of two onto three in the radial direction, and this would be force of two onto three in the tangential direction. What time did I say I was going to do it? 125, right? Because I got to go over to uh, uh, Molly to, to do a dynamics thing at one point. So, I know. It's so fun to do. Um, we also want to put in the reactions here. I, on 
the solution that you'll see potion, which isn't really a solution, it's just a table of stuff. Um, I, I, I made it, I still kept it as tangential and radial in hindsight. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, so uh, we'll say that it's the force of A onto 2 in the y direction. And it's obviously I'm going in the wrong direction right there. Well, we don't necessarily know, but this this guy is probably going to be the largest one. We have to be kind of a little, little bit careful onto there. Um, so I'll, I'll draw it downwards, but I'm, I, I'd, I'd want to see what this actually comes out to uh, from these forces. Um, and then I'll draw this as F, F uh, A2 in the X direction. Makes a lot more sense um, to, to be able to control it that way, because when you go to do it onto uh, uh, this shaft right here, you're having mixed directions, so it's better to go into uh, 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 those. Uh, so right here, um, I'm almost certain once again that it's going to be in that direction and in this direction. So this is going to be F uh, B onto three. We just want to see three, and that's going to be in the X direction and force B three in the Y direction. All right, and note there's no torque on this. Oh no, wait, wait, let me think, let me think. Yeah, there is a torque. There's a torque, there's an internal torque because B, B has to put a torque onto uh, this shaft, yes. So, and once again, I think I don't have that drawn on here and it should be. So there should be the uh, torque of B onto three. And that should, and the torque of B onto three should equal the torque of uh, B onto uh, four. And be in the same direction. So we'll have the torque of B onto four. I mean, this way right here. Is that true? I'm pretty sure. Excuse me? Yes. So should have a Um let me think what you're saying. What direction one? You said two and three. This is two and that's three. Yeah. yeah. Um, are they touching and spinning each other? Yeah, yeah. This this one is spinning this one. So should the arrow for T be the other way? This guy right here? No, the arrow. The, for the torque on three, three. three. Should that be the other way? Um... No. This this force is pushing it this direction right here. So this right here is having a resistance torque. This torque is being is resisting the motion that two is placing onto three. Okay. Right? And then so this guy is uh, uh, so the, these guys should actually be opposite from each other. So they should be actually be negative. The thing that we have to look at here is um, is that uh, uh, as drawn right here, that goes that way, and so that goes uh, uh, this way, and also that way. So um, this has to go. That way. Yeah. No. Damn it. I shouldn't try to rip it that way. Damn it. I gotta wonder if I'm uh, writing this the wrong way here. I'm sorry. I messed myself up.
right? So um, let, me, let me draw just to the side here. Okay, so this is clean this way. This is clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what are these two? This torque should be coming this way, T of, and I decide this is a, a shaft, you know, A, B, and C, so this is shaft of C that's coming onto five, that torque right here, right? So, um, yeah, you know, I think my arrows are wrong on, on this solution right here. Because this thing is turning this direction, right? Yeah, it's going clockwise, so the torque should be opposed right here. So I'm not 100% clear if I have getting this one right here. Um, and it's because, so now that force, no, that's correct. Okay, yeah, you know, no, no, I'm correct right here. Yeah. So this is going to be F of 4 onto 5 in the tangential direction. This is force. 4 into 5 in the radial direction. So we have this is going to be the force of 5 onto 4 in the radial direction. And this right here should be the force of 5, 4 in the tangential direction. And so that's going the correct way. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and I know that this torque has to be in the opposite direction of that arc rotation. Right? Because this is this is power out. It's going to happen right here. Whereas this is power in. These other ones, um, I'm just going to base these torques on which way that force is going to go. Right? They have they have to balance out with each other. Just some of the moments. Uh, okay, and I didn't finish with my um, uh, reactions. Uh, place up to here. So we have a reaction that's going to be F. Um, and what is this? This is going to be B on to 3 in the Y direction, and this is going to be F B3 in the X direction. And similarly, this is, I don't know which way it's going to go. I think I'll just draw it in the positive direction. We can see later if I got it wrong. So that's going to be F um, C onto 5, yes, in the uh, Y direction, and probably going to be in that direction, F C 5 in the X direction. And now this is going to get all messed up when you actually want to do, do stuff in here, because um, you want to make sure that you get the angles correct. So the angles depended on the orientation of this, and the orientation was an isosceles triangle. Did I say that right? It was equilateral triangle. Equilateral triangle. So like they were, they were like thirty degrees or sixty degrees, I guess. So sixty degrees interior angle onto the line. So you had to. So so each of those components right there, you had to pick out whether it was thirty or sixty. And, and then figure out and break them down uh, to get to here. So once again, this was a um, a, uh, a take home exam uh, uh, for the thing. So it was this is not an exam problem, but uh, was for, it, with that kind of thing was forcing you to really uh, pick through uh, no, no pun intended the um, uh, uh, what, what the arrangement was going to be. And then for we we can. We could approach this to get the actual magnitudes for the forces in, in a couple different ways. One of them is uh, we could always use the power is going to be constant throughout the whole thing, right? So that you could always find what any of the torques are just by with these RPMs, right? So each different RPM you could find what, the, what, what this torque is going to be internally with 600 and 2.5 uh, uh, horsepower, right? And once you know that torque, you can go and find what this tangential force is going to be, right? Just as, just the radius of the gear, 
that we were, that we were really getting. Uh, and then once you had that from the 14 and a half degrees, you're able to get what the radial component is. And then um, from this arrangement of these, you know, this isosceles or equilateral triangle, like this one wrong thing, um, you're able to find out what the x and y components are, and you're able to get what these forces are at, at, uh, onto the shaft. And remember, these are the shaft onto the gear, so the, the actual gear onto the shaft are the equal and opposite directions for each of them. But really, you might want to, you, you could do it just like, you, uh, it's probably easier to do here than it is to try to do it like in that 3D shaft problem right here, because these aren't like aligned with the X and Y axis uh, already here. So like getting to this point would be uh, a, a question of, uh, of you know, keeping, keeping those angles straight. Um, Another way to get any of these forces would be to find what the velocity is, right? We can get the, what the pitch line velocity is um, at each one. And, and then from that, uh, like what the 33,000 uh, 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 equation. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. All right. We got time for a short uh, uh, problem. Funny, like one, one of the problems I get, uh, put out to here, I think it was from the, the F12, I, I gave you a student solution <laughs> to the problem. That was, that was before I taught the class. Uh, it was a, a different one. Um, I have actually the, oh boy, I have the solutions uh, um, for, for that, that are posted, I think, um, uh, on these slides for some of them. So I'm just talk through this. Um, like the last one. So, there, on the review session, on the review guide, there are some like 370 problems. Yeah. Are you going to be picking some 370 problems on the exam, or are you just sticking? You know, I. I... I don't think I am, but I haven't like written the thing out. I'm doing it this weekend. Okay. Um, I I don't think there's enough time on the exam to like cover that topic, but it, it, but still, there's a I have a desire to keep that stuff alive. Would there be kind of like a combination of? I don't. Even, this shafts? this is a difficult one to do that in. I could ask like what a shaft stress was, but I wouldn't like want to do a three D. You know, the the F, doing the the reaction forces would take too much time uh, onto something. So um, I had I, I I'm hesitating because there's a couple problems that I really kind of liked um, in uh, when we did when we do the next exam. Where I have some in there, where I was like, "Oh, this was a really good problem." I liked that we did some. I have like, uh, I want the lifting capacity of some of this threaded uh, jack, um, but but it's limited by the shaft stress of the input onto the thing, onto the strength. I mean, it's it it, it isn't it doesn't take a long time to do, but you have to really understand the, some of the MA three seventy things in there. So I would say. Uh, uh, don't spend a lot of time, but I would like you know make sure that you you're, you're familiar enough with uh, uh, the, the basics. Uh, the thing. I'm not, uh, but but I, I haven't decided on something. I, 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 unless, unless something amazingly clever occurs to me, this is really dangerous. I don't like. I've, I've, I think I've learned over time so don't try to be too clever with the problems because there's always these unintended uh, uh, consequences and misinterpretation of the thing. So. Basically no. Basically no. Uh, I'm not going to ask you. That. I'm not going to ask you to do a 3D more circle, even though as much as I might want. Please go. Go. Would we do? Can we do uh, F15 gear basics and gear trains from the review? Yeah. Uh, well, then I guess. <laughs> uh, so which one? F15 there? Yeah. It says gear basics and gear trains. It's the one right under the, I don't see the fan. Oh, the one fan? Right before the fan. This thing is out of order. Gear stress. That's not the problem. 
That one right there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we don't have time right now um, to go through the thing. I'm, I'm trying to see if I have it. Uh, um, gear basics. The gear basics and gear train or gear trains and gear trains. Let's see if I have the solution Is it this one you want or this one? Uh, I think it was the first one. That one? Yeah. Okay. So, um, very similar to a homework problem. Yeah. Where, where we have this gear train uh, that we're looking for. So we want the, the base circle diameter of uh, gear B. Wasn't all that exciting. Um, so all we really needed was uh, the base. Oh, the base circle. Okay, yeah. So we find uh, the pitch circle. 70 teeth divided by the pitch, and then we take the cosine of 20 degrees and multiply it by there. Exciting. Center to center distance between shafts uh, one and two. Uh, so this distance to that distance, not exciting. We had shaft, uh, we have a gear A and gear B's diameters. We find the uh, average of those two, really adding the radius together of each. Um, and then we want to have the output speed and direction. Um, we could have used the negative, negative, negative. We get the negative so that we know that one's going clockwise, the other one's going to go counterclockwise. And then we have the gear trains as we go. Uh, this one's driving that one, that one's driving this one, this one's driving this one. And, and uh, we notice that this is an idler right here, so that they cancel out these two right here. But the, the, its main purpose is it reverses the shaft direction. Cool. I hope this was helpful. So, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, okay. Every little bit. Yeah. Every little bit. But I think just uh, checking the book out with uh, tabs. Yeah. Yeah. That'd yeah, be the hardest part. And like, yeah. Knowing what you know where to go. Man. Yeah. Exactly. Well, not, not only, but okay, so yeah. so we gotta be careful. Okay. That's probably one of the the, the biggest pitfalls that you, that you you'll run into if you don't practice some problems is uh, and practice them blindly without seeing the solutions and then see the solutions is you're gonna catch the little mistakes that you'll make because you didn't read what's next to the equations. That's the thing that you can't really do during a, an exam. Right. And it's the preparation where you're going to go, ah, this is the context in which it got used. And uh, uh, it's, it's probably where the most knowledge is actually getting tested uh, about your understanding of the application of these. Because it's, you know, it's not, it, plug in and chug in is, is dangerous in here because there's lots and lots of equations and some of them aren't meant for one, one set of circumstances. So for the bearing questions that we were doing, I guess, yesterday in class, 